Okay, thank you. So it seems that it's working the microphone. So I'd like first to thank the organizers. Uh, to have a lot of time to discuss. So uh, I, I'm going to present you some results, uh, some experimental results on bacterial motion uh, that in some way revisit this run and tumble uh, scenario. Uh, and this work is in collaboration with uh, the group I in Paris and Edinburgh. Uh, and the experiments are, were mainly done by Nuris Figueroa, that is now in uh, oh, Washington, I think. I don't know exactly. Um, OK. So um, I'm talking, I'm going to talk about this guy, the Chericha coli. Uh, this is the bacterium that we, that we like. That is uh, something that measures some microns in length, swims, depends on the, uh, on the, uh, on the type of Echiche coli at some tens of microns per second uh, because it has some flagella that bundle uh, like this by rotation. So the, the flagella rotates 100 hertz more or less and the body content rotates at 10 hertz essentially. And uh, because it gets an helicoidal form, uh, it swims uh, steadily, as you see in those old videos by Berg, where you see these fluorescent bacteria that they move mm -hmm. by this flagella. So the, this is uh, our object of study, E. coli in suspension. And uh, there's a typical and well-known scenario for E. coli, that is the run and tumble dynamics, and this is the accepted model. Uh, and the model says that bacteria swim uh, in the mode that is called the run. Uh, eventually, the flagella got disassembled, so they cannot swim anymore. They stop for a while. They re, -re bundle the, the flagella, and they continue in a new direction. So they do something like a straight line, stop, a new straight line, stop. And Things like that. So you have runs where, where the lengths are distributed exponentially with an average time of one second, more or less. And uh, the tumbles uh, actually take place when one of those six flagella, instead of rotating in one direction, start rotating in the opposite one. So the, the whole system dissembles. You cannot form this bundle or the bundle and the, the, the guy stops and stops for approximately 1.1 second. Mm -hmm. So this is the, uh, the typical model. I'm too far. OK. And uh, this model was first proposed also to describe chemotaxis. Chemotaxis is a process where you have one of those guys that wants to go to some attractant. And uh, the, the model says that runs actually are longer if they, they're moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, those guys are too small to measure locally the chemical gradient. So that actually what they do is they integrate over one run. So they integrate the, the amount of food in one run, and if it was it is larger than the average, then they continue running. They postpone a bit the tumble, and they they tumble again, and and uh, eventually you can show that this strategy uh, make a bias uh, diffusive motion that directs you to a attractant, mm -hmm. uh, and it's more or less optimal. Uh, if you cannot make local measurements. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, so, so how do you model this, uh, this thing? F if you now consider non-interacting swimmers, that is just single bacteria, you say that particles are des described by a director, P, uh, such that they self-propel in this direction. 
and with uh, some velocity v naught, and with some rate new, this direction changes in a Tambu process to a new one. Mm -hmm. So you have a kernel from changing this direction to this new one, and if the system is isotropic, it's only going to depend on the on the angle. Mm -hmm. And this is a typical uh, the standard model. And uh, then you you can write I, I uh, you write a, a, a kinetic equation. You can do kinetic theory for that, and you, you study this object that is the the number of swimmers that are at a given position with a given director at time t, and the kinetic equation is rather simple because you have here the streaming part that particles move in the direction p, and you have the tumble that is with a rate new, you lose. Uh, particles and with a rate new you create particles that were in some previous direction and tumble to the new one. But I included a, 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 an additional effect that, uh, that new actually is not a constant but to model chemotaxis you say new depends on the gradient in a fashion that is this uh, one hertz ratio uh, but it decreases a bit if you're moving along the good gradient. That, that's the, the, the usual kinetic model for, run and, for chemotactic run and tumble. That is, you have a rate that depends locally on the gradient. Mm -hmm. You can solve this kinetic model and it gives you the diffusion constant, for example, because those guys are going to get uh, you get an effective diffusion. That is, this bidimensional analysis, you know that this goes like this, but it depends on the kernel. And also, you get a chemotactic current that depends on this sensitivity to the chemical gradient. Mm -hmm. And you get uh, this chemotactic gradient. And you can do corrections and you can do uh, other, uh, study other transport properties. Mm -hmm. I, I think this is all the theory I'm going to show you, but it's just to show you some of the methods that are used to describe these, these swimmers uh, and study transport properties here. Now, if you go to denser systems, uh, you do more or less the same. You say that the swimmers are going to move, uh, here it should be P, along the director, and uh, they interact with some potential that can also not, not only depend on the relative positions, but can also depend on the relative orientations, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, and typically, uh, if you want to simplify the model, you just say, okay, just yes, exclude the volume. Mm -hmm. And uh, this model of run and tumble swimmers uh, that are actually described like this, that is spherical particles that want to move in one direction, they self-propel and eventually they tumble and they interact just with uh, um, excluded volumes, has been able to explain many properties uh, shown by bacteria and other swimmers, like chemotax chemotaxis and the correction of chemotaxis due to higher densities, the clustering of swimmers because they agglomerate and they can uh, uh, cluster, um, uh, they can create some local clusters, and eventually they can this, those clusters can, can coarsen in a, some a trans, in a transition. You can get some, something like wetting phenomena, that is if you have a wall, particles get attached to the wall and remain there for a long time. Uh, we can study the rheology of bacterial suspensions, and there's a nice paper, some years, three years ago already, that showed that uh, if you put those swimmers, these run and tumble swimmers, in a... Um, wet flow, you can align the swimmers along the, the extensional direction, and because swimmers push the fluid, you can get something like a superfluid, because they push the fluid exactly in the same amount that you're, you need to produce the shear, and you don't need any work on, on the walls to produce the shear. Uh, and you can study many, many other phenomena with this run and tumble motion. So, so it's very popular. Uh, uh, and because it was, ah, okay, let, let me show you uh, another thing before. 
that uh, we, we, we show also that it was possible uh, to have a artificial swimmers. And this is an artificial swimmer made by uh, diffusophoretic colloids, these particles that have these uh, active rods uh, that uh, have some chemical reactions here. They self-assembly spontaneously, but they can self-assembly in two configurations. And because of the system is Brownian, you can have transitions from one configuration to the other. This is swimmer. This is not swimmer. This is like doing a sample. So you get something that is moving in a run, goes to a sample, and then start running again. So you, you can have, uh, and this swimmer actually follows this run and tumble description. OK, so because it was so popular, we wanted to measure the parameters of the run and tumble motion. That is, we want to measure the duration of the run phase. That is one over new. The duration of the tumble phase, mm -hmm. eventually the kernel, if it was possible, and actually th those were the preliminary stuff of the, of the thesis of Nuris, because the real thesis was the dependence of those parameters under imposed flow. We never got to that part, because, because those, that part was already very interesting. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to measure everything there. So uh, we use uh, this apparatus that is a, a, a tracker, a tr 3D automatic tra tracker that you put the in a microfluidic chamber, the bacteria, you follow with a, with a, with, with a microscope and in a camera, and uh, you can move in the x and x and y uh, directions uh, the the stage to to keep the uh, the bacteria in the center of the cell, more or less, and also because when it moves up and down, uh, you create Newton rings, and so so you can correct the height just to keep the, part, uh, the particle in focus. So we were able to track the three uh, uh, coordinates. Mm -hmm. So having the, the position, we were able to obtain the instantaneous velocity. And we say, OK, that was easy. Get the velocity, get the moments where the velocity goes to 0, and you say, there's a tumble. The problem is that, that that's the velocity. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to decide to put a threshold there and say, below that threshold, the guy is stopped. Uh, no, no, it's not serious. Uh, it's not serious because it uh, depends a lot on how you measure velocity. You have to smooth the trajectory first. Um, and it depends, obviously, obviously, on the threshold. So we didn't like that approach. Yes? Yes, it tumbles a lot. That is speed. That's the modulus. Uh, yes, because the the guy is also small, so even when it's stopped, it's tumbling, uh, it's subject to Brownian motion. But also the 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 flagella never stop. What happens is that the the flagella dis disassembled, so you have n minus 1 flagella rotating in one direction, 1 rotating in the, in the opposite direction that they cannot assemble into a bundle. And so the, the guy do something strange. Uh, Yeah, now I'm going to explain you what we did and what we get. So we, we were getting positions, the instantaneous speed, not easy to identify tumbles. So we uh, decided to uh, do the following. We track at low concentration, so it's single swimmers, actually. From the velocity vector, we can get the director, P. 
and we compute the correlation function, the self-correlation function of the director. P times scalar product uh, P up with a delay delta T. Mm -hmm. If the random table model is correct, that is the kinetic equation that I wrote you is correct, then you predict that C should decay exponentially with a characteristic time that is goes like one over the tumble rate with a prefactor that depends on the kernel. So actually we were able to measure uh, new, uh, not new, but new combined with some uh, function of the kernel. Now if we were able to measure the probability, we were able to, in principle, we were able to, to, to measure the, the kernel as well. Okay, so, so the idea is measure this correlation function, how the direction is going, is, uh, is losing memory, and uh, you get that. And uh, the, the advantage of that uh, strategy is that it includes uh, Brownian motion. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't put in the in the equations. Maybe I can show you what. Uh, but it's quite simple. You have just to add here a Fokker-Planck term. And you have a uh, diffusive uh, uh, Brownian motion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that. That was the principle, and those are the results. So th those are typical trajectories. Uh, here, the, the bacterium is swimming close to the wall. We discard that part because it's too influenced by the wall. Then it goes up, and here is one guy swimming happily in the bulk. Mm -hmm. And those are the results that we get. The correlation function as a, as a function of time lag, they are nice exponentials. So actually they're, they're very good nice exponentials because if you, for each one, you compute the exponential, the time de uh, decay, and you scale the time lag by the time re de re decay, you get a very nice exponential decay. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Guys, uh, these swimmers were losing memory. They were doing tumbles in a Poissonian way. That is, uh, is what you expect when you get a, uh, well, what you deduce when you get an, expo an exponential decay. The problem is that the characteristic times were very, very different. Mm -hmm. And here they are plotted. Uh, just look at, at the blue ones. Uh, we get from very small persistent times up to very long persistent times. Bacteria. Yes. Yes. Different lines are different bacteria. In the same, exactly the same conditions. Yes, that, that was the question. So first, we were, not a, we were tracking different bacteria, and those are uh, uh, the results of all the, those bacteria. Mm -hmm. So the one possibility is that there was some genetic difference, or uh, during the growth, they developed different uh, motors or whatever. Uh, those guys here are uh, another kind of bacteria that do tumble very rarely. So the persistent times is essentially given by the uh, Brownian motion. So, uh, and this is the Brownian prediction, so it's quite good. But for the typical E. coli, you get the, the broad result. So that was for different bacteria, and we succeed in doing an experiment with a single bacterium, following uh, like this. So Bacteria like walls, so they want they go to a wall. They remain there for a long time, and eventually they detach from the wall. They remain there for a long time. They detach from the wall and like, like doing like this. So we measured in those periods where the swimmer was in the in the bulk, and we measured the correlation function and we fit it to the exponentials, and those are the results. Mm -hmm. Those are different bacteria. And those are different measurements 
for the same bacterium. Mm -hmm. So a single bacteria can, bacterium can go from very small to very large times. So the, uh, our conclusion was that the, the bacterium were uh, evolving on time. The, this variability was not uh, genetic, was not uh, uh, developed during growth, but was a dynamic variability. So we, we get, went to the literature and there was a model proposed by Tuan Greenstein that were, was inspired by some measurements uh, that uh, like to say on collaborators. Uh, and the model is, says the following. For a tumble to take place, uh, you say that the flagellum can be in two states, either rotating clockwise or counterclockwise. And uh, there's a free energy landscape for these two states. Mm -hmm. there's, and there's a, a free energy here, and those are the only preferred states. And there's a barrier there. And this barrier, delta G, what they say that depends on the instantaneous concentration of a protein, TYP, and this concentration is called Y. And the process of producing this protein is slow takes about one minute. So this free energy that depends on that variable is evolving, depending on the local concentration, but it's evolving slowly. It takes one minute to change from one value to another value. So uh, if you just take the first correction, you say that the difference of free energy is the free energy at the reference state plus some correction, that depends on how the free energy, the, 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 the concentration of the protein changes from the reference state, then uh, you can do write this simple model that is uh, you have the deviation of the concentration compared to, to the reference state uh, divided by the variance such that delta x uh, is a Gaussian variable with a variance 1. It evolves with a typical time scale of one minute and with some noise. And you say that the, ta the switch time, the tumble rate, uh, is exponential, uh, depends exponentially on delta x. That is, the, and this is the picture. You have uh, an instant where you have low concentration of delta x, the low concentration of the protein that is delta x negative, and you have long run times. And then um, you have a larger concentration of the protein, delta X is positive, and you have uh, more frequent tumbles. Mm -hmm. So you get this kind of trajectory. There is many long, longer runs, and then you have shorter runs. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's quite direct here to say that if delta X is Gaussian, then the persistence times should be log normal. Uh, so we took those results here and we built the distribution. And the distribution, the PDF of the logs of the persistence times were not a uh, Gaussian. <laughs> That is, we were predicting a log normal distribution. This is a Gaussian, but uh, the experiments are the red ones. Mm -hmm. So it's similar, but not a Gaussian. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did, we ran some simulations of the model, and the simulations show this nice Gaussian. So the, we were not getting the same result, except that we had to consider seriously the experiment. And the experiment says that uh, Nuris, we were discarding the walls. So we were discarding all the, wha everything that happens close to that plate and close to that plate. So we were preferring or selecting bacteria that were swimming essentially parallel to the walls. That introduces a bias. If we put that bias into the simulation, 
That is, we run the, the simulation of the model that I, I, I present you, but we select the tracks to analyze them, to analyze them in the sense that computing the correlation function, extracting the persistent time, and doing the histogram, then we get that. That is, okay. I think I'm almost done. Yes, I'm done on time. So first, the, the, the first conclusion is that this behavioral variability on tumble times uh, can be explained dynamically. It's not something that is comes with the with the swimmer. Each swimmer explores all the all the possibilities. Mm -hmm. uh, because the, the body is small, they are subject to large fluctuations. In this case, the concentration of the protein. So their dynamics is fluctuating. Mm -hmm. uh, it is well reproduced by by simulations, and uh, is a message to experimentalists as well, is that you have to, because the persistent times is, are, are long, but also the memory time is longer even, one minute, uh, you have to be very careful on how you analyze data, because you can introduce some bias uh, that you didn't expect. And we now we understand the results of Berg in the early 70s, that he, he said is exponential, with characteristic time one second. It, is, it is because he selected, they selected some tracks with some protocol to select the tracks, and the way the, of selecting the tracks uh, actually was discarding those bacteria that were having long persistent times because they were escaping the, uh, the field of view. So you could, you could not analyze them you discard, discarded them, and you get this ni uh, nice exponential decay. Okay, and now uh, is where fun starts because now we know that the, the model has to be corrected. We know how to correct that, and we want to do everything that we knew before with the new model. That is to the study transport, rheology, chemotaxis, and other stuff with this model for bacteria. Okay, thank you. <laughs>